Hey everyone, this is Toby Pittman here. I've got a quick modelling tip for you. What I'm going to do is show you a really good concept for working with kind of pipe work or tubing and just a really good way of visualising the modelling process when doing this. So the basic theory is that instead of modelling these kind of objects with splines, as a base we're going to model them with geometry and then steal the edges from them. So here's a good example of what I mean. Let's say I want to model um, some handlebars for a chopper. Instead of working this out with splines using the spline tool, what I'm going to do is just grab a polygon, put my direction to Z minus, and now I'm just going to make this editable. Go into edge mode, and I'm just going to model the shape of these handlebars using this polygon. So the first thing I want to do is probably just move this back and I can just move this up like so hit T to scale scale this out go back to my move tool copy this edge out holding command or control on the PC hit T again and just scale out Let's kind of move this down. So now I have this kind of shape. So what I'm actually going to do is steal these edges to make my handlebars. Now to do this, I'm just going to use a command here. It's up in Mesh, Commands, and it's called Edge to Spline. Bit of an old trick, this. And as soon as I do this, I'll get a spline under my polygon. So let's hide that. And here's my spline. Now the reason I like doing this is A, it's easier to visualize this shape in geometry. But at least it is for me anyway. As you get a better sense of the kind of 3D volume of it, and I just find it easier to manipulate two faces than try to uh, position all these points in 3D and get them all lined up. And I'd have to do this in, uh, you know, various viewports, etc. And B, it's also easier to get the symmetry correct on this object as well. Now, if I want to um, soften these curves, uh, my spline is set to linear at the moment. But if I uh, just select Adaptive here, go to my points. Let's just go Select All and Deselect two endpoints, holding Shift. Grab my uh, chamfer tool, and now I can just chamfer these points out. So all I need to do now is just add some volume to this. Just grab an end side spline. Let's give this some more edges. Take our size down, put this in a sweep nerve and drop our spline below. And now I have, you know, a set of handlebars here. Um, really easy to accomplish. So that's the general technique. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, make a cube. And let's make this a bit taller and a bit thinner. Now instead of chamfering your edges after the fact when you've created the spline. You can actually do this on the actual geometry to start with. Select my cube, press C to make it editable. It's going to edge mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these two edges here and these two edges at the back. Go to my bevel tool. Make sure I'm in chamfer mode here. I'm going to give them about three subdivisions. And now I'm going to bevel these edges out. That looks about right. Now, I'm not worried about the fact that this has a lot of end on geometry because the actual geometry is irrelevant. What I'm after is this edge that's running around here. Now, all I need to do is actually just delete this back face. I can do this pretty easy with the Fong Selection tag as the Fong tag is active across 
all of these polygons. And we can see that because we have uh, some nice kind of fong shading going on here. Whereas this fong shading is broken across these 90 degree angles. Uh, so we can just select that face like so. Let's delete that. And now we can just select this outside edge. I could get my loop tool, say select boundary loop, and select this pretty easily like so. Now, instead of going through this whole process of, you know, going up to the mesh commands, edge to spline, I'm actually going to use a really super useful script in HB Modeling Tools that does this all for you in one click. Now, this script is called Pipe It, and literally all I have to do is just click this. And you can see that it's created a spline. put an end side in the sweep. Now the only thing I really have to do here is make sure I close the spline up. But you can see that I get the desired result in one click, which is super useful. So if I want to smooth this off, at the moment I only have the amount of segments that I created inside this geometry. I can simply set this to Bezier, then I can just mess about with the angle here until I get the amount of uh, segments that I want. So again, a very um, simple way to achieve shapes like this, which are usually a bit of a faff to create with splines. Now I can take this one step further and add some rungs to this. This might be like a little step ladder that goes up the side of something. Um, I can go back to my geometry here. Let's hide our sweep. Let's go into edge mode. And I'm just going to select these two edges. Get my edge cut tool. Let's give it three subdivisions. Let's click on the screen. You can see I get these three cuts here. Let's get our move tool. I can select these edges here, just go back to pipe it. Let's go to our end side here, shrink the size of this down a little bit, add our other sweep in, take our geometry out, and now we have um, this kind of shape. So again, you know, 10 times quicker than having to create the splines, copy the splines, move the splines. You can very easily do this with geometry, with a simple knife cut. So you can imagine this kind of ladder feature might fit around an object like so. So that's a very easy way to model something like that. Now you can also pull these kind of pipe shapes out of existing geometry as well. Let's say I have this kind of balcony situation going on here. And I want to create a railing that goes around the top of here. It's going to go to polygon mode here. Now what I can do is, you know, select these top polygons and I can do this a number of different ways. I could uh, loop this whole situation that's going round this shape. You can see that I have a, um, an edge loop running round here like so. But I think I'm only interested in these top polygons, so I'm going to go UP and split these off. And here are my new polygons here. So let's hide this for now. Let's go into edge mode, select the geometry. Let's do a ring selection and I'm gonna hit all X. Now this is my key command for connect points and edges, which is one of the most useful things when it comes to modeling. Now what this is going to do is it's actually going to split all these edges into two sections. And now I obviously have two loops of polygons like so. But I'm just interested in this edge here. Now this is quite a bizarre thing to do, but what I'm actually going to do is lift these edges out like so. 
Now, I wouldn't recommend doing this when you're actually modelling something as this will cause all sorts of issues for you. But in this case, it's actually a pretty valid technique. Because all I want to do really here is steal this edge, which has been raised above this bottom surface. So to save a little bit of time here, I'm just going to hit pipe it. Let's hide that geometry. I can actually see my splines here. I could go into X-ray mode, go into point mode. Well, which should make it easier to see my spline. I can select my two corner points, hitting shift. Make sure this is set to adaptive and then chamfer this out like so. And here I have my railing. Now, if I want to connect this railing to my balcony, let's hide some of these bits here. I'm going to go to edge mode, get my ring selection tool, two iterations, scale these out. So now I'm just going to select this end, I'm going to connect, select this end, connect. And all I'm interested in are these edges here. But I'm going to grab these edges and just move these back. Select these edges, go pipe it. Reduce the size of this a little bit. Done with this piece of geometry now. Let's unhide everything else. And there we have a kind of a railing that's fitting this piece of geometry. So this last one is just about making kind of tileable piping scenarios. Sort of thing you'd find in an engine room or something like that. I've got a plane here, it's 12 by 12. I'm just going to hit C, make this editable, go into edge mode. And if you're wondering, I have my um, component modes just attached to a key command, which is Alt or Option, and I use Q for points, W for edges, and E for polygons. Makes it very easy to switch when modeling. So what I can do now is hit UM and grab my path selection tool, go into edge mode. And I'm just going to select a path like this. And just to save a bit of time, I'm going to do a pipe it. Okay, let's just scale this down. I'm not really worried about curving any of this yet. Now, if you're going to tile this, you need to make sure the ends of your pipe are at the same position on either side. Now, currently, this isn't going to tile because I have one end here and one end down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another pipe that starts here and ends here. The problem is though that I don't want these pipes to intersect. So what I'm going to do is utilize our technique we used before. Go to UM, get my path selection tool. I'm going to start from about here, come down to here, grab my move tool, and I'm going to just extrude these edges like so. Back to my path tool, hold shift, and then I'm going to carry these edges on like so. So now when I do another pipe hit, you can see this is uh, freaking out a little bit. The uh, end-sided spline is a bit too big here. Let's hide my plane. What I get is another pipe that kind of starts in the same position, but is now bypassing this portion. And now I'm able to um, tile these two. Now what I have to make sure is that both of my end sides are the same. So this is 1.9. Let's put this up to 1.9. Let's just hide our sweep and select our splines. Go into point mode. Let's select all our corner points. 
get our chamfer tool, chamfer these out. If I find I've got too many uh, iterations through here, just select both my splines and just decrease the amount of segments with the uh, angle. And now I have something like this. Now you can build up some really complex kind of pipe situations doing this. And the benefit of um, having both ends meet up at the other side is that you could say take these sweeps, group these, copy them, come into object mode here. Let's rotate these round like so. Move tool and move these out. And now we have something that is a little less repetitive as we have a um, different scenario on each side. So here's a quick way you can make a kind of twin pipe effect. Let's do this. Let's go to our bevel tool. Let's make sure our metering is set to uniform and then we can bevel this edge out. Now the great thing about this is you get kind of two edges that run parallel to each other around these corners. Now the way to get around making this symmetrical and making these join up at either end, we want to kind of create two more sets of pipes that are going to overlap. Now this will be pretty difficult with our existing geometry because we've altered it quite radically here. Now what I would normally do is just cut this from the existing scene with Command X and then I could go back a bunch of steps to before I beveled and then just recopy this in like so or I can create a new plane. So I'm going to go back to my plane now and I'm going to go to edge mode, UM path selection, select this edge now I want to overlap these two pipes, bring it back to here and along to here. So now if I go to my bevel tool and I do a new transform, I get my edges that should end up in the same place as these existing pipes. Now I can uh, actually shift the position here by doing a couple of things. I could either select these edges like so and I'm going to copy these out like this or I could go into polygon mode get my selection tool and just select these polygons here and extrude these out like so go back to edge mode um and then just kind of select path I want hold shift Make that selection, let's pipe that. Let's check the size of our other one, 1 1.4. Let's go to point mode. Now what I can do is actually um, just connect these two splines together and just use one sweep, which should work. Um, so just select my corner points. Sometimes it's useful to actually see this happening on your sweep. Play with the angle here a little bit. And now you can see you have something that's uh, pretty complex, but pretty easy to make using that plane. You could throw this into a cloner, and you can see that um, it becomes very easy to get these uh, kind of long pipe scenarios. Start throwing a bunch of these kind of objects together, and you get something that's pretty complex in a very short period of time. So I hope you found those techniques useful. Now, if you're looking for more tips on modelling, you can check out Making It Look Great 11. And there's plenty of tips to be had here, 24 hours of tips. And we go through all aspects of kind of hard surface modelling from geometry theory through to subdivision surface modelling. It's pretty thorough. And I am your host. So definitely check that out at motionworks.net. And I will see you back here for some more modeling tips in the future. So I'll see you next time. Have a good one.